Right. So now we're going to start looking at lapping in the vowels. What is lapping in and how do we do it? Lapping in is so that this seal here, which as you can see is not very good, not very regular, is married perfectly to the cutout in the valve seat. The valve seat is made of a very hard sintered material and the idea is that we're going to use the idea is that we're going to use a grinding paste like this which you put on the valve and it then goes into the valve guide and you rock it backwards and forwards. Now so we just introduce a bit of grinding paste on the end of it. I use a old jigsaw blades. There we are. I'll put a finger behind so you know where you are. Right, you get the principle. Now I'll go on for a bit and then I'll show you how you progress. Right, so with the machine disconnected, we can now remove the valve See, it's got the stuff all the way around it. See? Now then. Just look clean with thinners. And as you can see, already... The valve seat is grinding and compare that one to the untouched one. See? Right. Now we can have a look at the valve seat itself. It's not too bad. There's no damage, no nothing. There. I think you can see a bit better now. <coughs> Excuse me. The round the edge of the valve seat has been clicked. Now as you can see, look, you see the seal is starting to form here, but can you see there's still a shadow so it hasn't ground all the way down yet? So as I say, we'll have to continue. Okay. So now, as you can see, we've got the rough lapping done. Nice matte finish, same width band all the way around is what's required. And here we see the valve seat, that's where the shadow was, that's where you could see it was still black and dirty. Now it's all being ground in all the way around. Okay, now that's the coarse paste done, that's this one. And then because you're proud of your work, you're going to do it with a fine paste, which takes out any little scratches, look, like there, in the finish. Okay, well now I've got to get on and do all the valves, so I'll see you later. So that's, <coughs> that's three passes, and the valve's starting to look reasonably clean. And as you can see, we're not there yet, we're not there yet, we're not there yet, okay? So, on to another pass. Then nice 
nice and easily. Right, so that's three passes, which was sufficient for these valves. But as you can see, while it's good there, nice flat grey band, can you see how it gets shinier? Can't make the light do anything. Can you see that there is actually a reflection? It's got to be matte grey, okay? And the valve itself is coming along quite nicely. I'm starting to get a good shape. So I think we're going to do, ooh, I think there's at least another two or three passes to do there. Okay, back to it. Okay, so we've done some more grinding, still on the coarse paste. Look, you see the seat is starting to come together now, but look, you see there's still a little bit of a, a shadow there. Right? Remember, it was a bit reflecty bit before. So now there's just, we've got to keep on going a little bit more just to chase that out. And here's the valve itself, looking a nice wide seat. Obviously, it'll have to be done with uh, fine paste to take out the little scratches, but it's coming along. We're getting there. Right, well, there we are now on the rough grind. I'm quite happy with that. Tiny trace of a shadow, but that will come out with the uh, fine paste. And we've got a nice matte band. So if this one took what I call three passes, three times putting in the compound and cleaning it out. This took six. Anyway, we go on to the next one now. See the difference, look. That to that. See? There we are. Okay, on we go. Well, here we are on another sunny morning. Right, we're going to do the the second lapping of these valve seats. Can you see it's got rings that go around? And on here as well, you can see that it's got like little rings. Well, now we're going to use the fine grinding paste and that will take out the scratches. So I'll get on and show you that. Okay, so that's just one pass with the fine grain. Hold it into the light, and as you can see, you see it's now completely matte and smooth. Same thing here. There we are. So now we go and do the rest of the valves, and then we can do the clean down, and we can start looking at fitting the valve springs. Okay, so the uh, valves are done and lapped. Nothing's been properly cleaned through yet. Now we're going to look at the support studs that hold the rocker bars. <coughs> okay, so we've cleaned the thread on all the offending parts with the threading tool, with the die, seven millimeter m7 by 1.0 not m8 and not m6 m7 by 1.0 now as you can see this head has been worked on in the past and it's had helicoil inserts put in and uh, i'm going to have to clean everything out before i can put in the new studs um helicoiling i discussed the piston, the spark plug threads. Uh, just to show you, here is a helicoil tool. Right, a helicoil tool is two main parts: got this one and that one. And the main tool consists of, in this case, um, a 14 millimeter spark plug thread, and then a larger cutting tool, which is eventually going to allow to pass the helicoil. See that's the little helicoils, different lengths. And then the second tool is you set it up, you set this collar 
for the length of the tool that you're going to insert and then you wind it in into the head and then you can undo the collar and wind it out and then you break off the end with a pair of pliers now you can break off the end from this side uh, and I keep this to s get uh, beetle engines out of trouble normally like I said with a three-quarter 19 millimeter reach spark plug it isn't too much of an issue and if it were an issue I would suggest that you get it done rather than try to do it yourself because this is quite an art using these Okay, so now I have got to find some M7 by 1.0 nuts because they're missing and we're going to build this back up and then we're going to give it a clean down. Okay. So that once the threads and the threads, clean them with a bit of acetone, degrease them and then I'm going to use a little bit of screw lock and then just wind it in to about 36 millimeters from here okay so i'll get that done That'll do. One more little tweak. See, like that. And on to the next ones. Okay, so while we're doing the final sort of cleaning of the cylinder head and so on, here are the exhaust ports. Look, they've got to be clean, get any stuff out of the way. Little scraper, don't gouge. Make sure that these nuts run freely. That's an M4 tap, which you have to do on both sides. Uh, same thing for the inlet ports. Uh, again clean them round make sure all the threads run nicely and the, and the valves are now out by the way and then we give it the big drench with compressed air and solvent and so on to really clean the head out once and for all right as I said because the ceiling surface may well have been damaged slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to use an old cylinder and we're going to apply a little bit of fine grinding paste and then we're just going to lap the, this surface into that surface. Okay, I'll get that set up for okay. you. A little bit of grinding paste. There she goes. See, it's gone all the way around now. Not a lot. And then we can do the other one.
and then obviously we're going to clean and inspect and then that's about it really we can then start doing the big clean down and fit the valve springs there we go okay right so that's the cylinder head lapped to the barrel and just roughly cleaned off now we're going to give it the drench to clean everything out any even the last particles of anything abrasive so it's just an air pot uh, thinners I switched the air I switched the thinners off start the gun up uh, open up the jet and clean everywhere it's going to get noisy because the compressor will start up okay so here we go <laughs> thoroughly when it's thoroughly drenched then you can turn off the air and go over and clean the whole thing until it's completely dry and then we will again check the uh, valve guides and then we can fit the valves and springs <laughs> Ah well, just when you think you're nearly there and ready to start putting the valves in, I said I gave the cylinder head a clean and start to tap out the holes. And what do we have here? We've got a broken screw, so we're going to have to extract that by hook or by crook. Uh, we'll see what happens first of all. Okay, so <coughs> we're going to have to retrieve this stud because it's broken right off um, there's nothing to grab hold of the good news is however that this is not a blind screw it goes through to here so that you can get at it a little bit from the other side so what you have to do you start off we make a punch like that I've already done it as you can see all right and then we're going to drill it out with a small diameter drill say something like a three or a three and a half just to get it right and we're going to put a little bit of oil in and then we're going to go up to say uh, it's a six so we're going to go up to say four and a half millimeter uh, and then we're going to either have to uh, uh, tap it out or we might be able to collapse the threads or you know we just have to see what happens uh, there's <laughs> never two quite the same Okay, I'll set that up then. Right. 
Right, four millimeter drill bit, bit of cutting oil. Gently does it. Oh, there you go. Right, so we've drilled that at M4, and we're going to try with an M5 tap and see if we can remove the remains of the metal. And then if not, then we might have to just tap it at M6 and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. Obviously you don't want to go too far. I want to look what's happening at the other side of things. A little bit of cutting while I won't do anyhow. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill it at M5 and that will either collapse the thread or allow me to tap again at M6. So I'll set that up. Ah. That's it. That little bit is broken out of there now. Let's have a look at what we've got. That's looking pretty tidy. I think we're going to tap that now at M6. Okay, so that now we'll tap it out at M6. Now remember there might be some little bits of iron thread left in there, so it might be a bit sort of... So that now, the screw just wingles in. Check the other one while we're at it, which I have cleaned out. There we go. So that's that little job job. Okay, so maybe we'll be able to move on to the valves and valve springs. Okay, so now we're going to start looking at fitting the valves and springs. So by precaution, take a little bit of engine oil and a bit of paper towel. into the valve guide push it through you see, you thought that was clean Look. so do it again and again until it comes out clean ok, and again See? Still not clean. Third pass coming up. And that's the third pass. And that's sufficiently clean. So clean out all your valve guides. And then again clean the valves themselves. And we're going to put a little bit of molybdenum sulfide CV joint grease on the stems just to help them at start up. Okay, well I'll get these done and then we get the next part set up. So, now we take the new valve oh, mark which end of the head is which a little bit of molybdenum sulfide grease, MS2 just to help the thing as it starts his working life okay Right, repeat, and then we'll turn the head round and start fitting the valves. Okay, so we're going to now refit the valves and springs, the reverse of the removal procedure. We open the, close the spring down rather, open the, Gauge up until you can see clearly what's going on. Alright, 
and then my suggestion then we're going to put the little collets and what I do is you have a little dob of grease and these are magnetized so that it makes life that little bit easier so live demonstration I hope we get it right first time eh? a little bit of grease on That's one on, which you then turn around, right, so that you can get the next one on. You're only going around one way, obviously. There we go. That's it. Just make sure they go nicely together. And then watching what's going on, don't make sure that they sit nicely. A little there you go. That's that. Make sure it all looks nice. And then give it a whap there we are carry on rest of the valves I'll leave you to it okay so that's now your four valves in looking fairly tidy and now we just go on to the final checks okay so we can Take the spark plugs, you can always put a little bit of little bit of copper grease on the threads. So that the spark plugs are uh, just tightened up by hand and then we use some white spirit. So you pour white spirit a reasonable depth you can bring it up exactly to the line and then you want to see no leaks it's as simple as that so leave it 20 minutes or half an hour and if it hasn't sunk it hasn't all drained away then uh, you can start thinking about patting yourself on the back I suppose because basically that's this cylinder head done there we are. Okay, so I've had my lunch, and as you can see, we've still got plenty of uh, uh, liquid. Nothing's disappeared, no dribbling, so we can say that's good and passes. So that will now rejoin the other cylinder head, and we'll eventually go back onto a two litre engine which we'll be discussing in another video anyway i hope this has proved useful and will encourage you to save yourself lots of money bye for now